What's up, nature freaks? What's going on, guys? Dave and Jeremy back in the field again, and today is all about bats and bat research. That's right, and our friend Johnny here asked us to help in volunteering, doing some research on an endangered bat species called the Indiana bat. Uh, thank you, Jeremy and Dave, for being here today. My name is Johnny Bartline. I'm a graduate student at the University of Illinois, and I study Indiana bats and their roosting behavior. And uh, tonight, Jeremy and Dave will be counting hundreds of bats as they emerge from their boxes. All right, well, let's get to counting. One, two, yeah, three, four, five, bats. One. <laughs> <laughs> We are testing this in this design, like the one above you. So oh, that's a different one, yeah. That's a different one. There's an insulation layer of water and um, insulation foam yeah. separating the two chambers. All right, so we're counting bats, and we're also you've been taking air temperature. Yep. Uh, and that's it. Wind speed or just the temperature? Uh, temperature and wind speed. Okay. So uh, uh, I am. Um, Obviously, I'm looking at the population. Uh, so this is why we, one reason I'm counting. But another question I'm, uh, my research is tackling is um, why do they switch uh, between uh, roosts? So we would notice that uh, uh, over the course of a week, they will start uh, in, uh, like you will see large number in one roost cluster, then they will go down, they will move to another roost cluster, and another, uh, then another. So we are trying to answer that question, why they uh, switch uh, roost every three to five days by looking at uh, environmental uh, factor, roost type, number of bats, whether they are following uh, their friends or not. They are a very social bat. And there's many theories uh, about why they switch. One of them being they avoid ectoparasite accumulation in the roosts, for instance. Where the bat bugs, they're like very similar to the bed bugs. They're in the okay. same uh, family, <laughs> actually. They uh, inhabit the roosting spaces mm. and uh, they, uh, they're ectoparasites, so they feed on the blood of the bats. Yeah. Other reason is like predator avoidance. They don't want to stick in the same uh, roost for... Um, a long period of time so the predator will not find them yeah all right all right guys we are about to start counting some bats and uh so johnny we know these bats are in danger but are they making a good comeback um i know you've done these this research for a few years now how are our bats doing nowadays so the latest species assessment on indiana bat has them thankfully stable overall uh, unfortunately, some sites on the east coast have experienced severe decline, but fortunately here, uh, and especially in the Ozark and the uh, Midwest region, they seem to be doing okay. Uh, on our site here in central Indiana, uh, we've seen a population increase. Uh, however, we don't know that if these are the same bats that are uh, returning year after year or there's like neighboring bats that are coming since our site and boxes are favorable for them mm -hmm. uh, but overall and since the early 90s we 
they he had 150 bat on this site. This summer our maximum was close to 800. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah, so we just uh, we use the daylight to check the roost. He always does roost pre-checks to set up to know where to count. Obviously, instead of just setting up and there's no bats in the roost to leave. Um, so we we got that figured out. We're gonna set up some chairs, count the bats. <laughs> 